All right, what's up everyone? Uh, a question I often get is, how should I bake my normal map? Should I use ZBrush? Should I use Substance Painter? What's the difference? What's going on there? And I can see here that I've got the normal map applied uh, in Maya. I can see that it's uh, relatively low poly, but I got all this detail um, that looks like it's the high poly. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do it both ways. I'm going to generate normal maps from ZBrush, and I'm going to generate normal maps from Substance Painter. And then I'm going to apply both in Maya, and we'll actually take a look at, see if there is a difference and which way is more efficient. So let's get right to it. If I jump into ZBrush, this is what I'm talking about. I've got my low poly model, okay? And if I bump this up, here's the high poly information. Now, how do we translate this? How do we get this to Maya, okay, as a normal map? Well, if I wanna use ZBrush, and what what's the reasoning that I might wanna do that instead of Substance? Well, maybe you don't own Substance Painter. You don't need Substance Painter to make a normal map. You can do it straight out of ZBrush. Um, but before I do that, let me just kinda of show you how this is set up. If I look at this, if I click on this and go to UV, UV Editor, I can see that, um, the UVs, this is the normal zero to one space right here, but I have this set up as a UDIM workflow, meaning that I have more than one tile, okay? And I have videos on that if you're confused by that, but I feel like I just wanna make sure that you understand that because that's gonna make a difference. So now that we understand that, I'm gonna go back into ZBrush and um, you might say, well, hey, I'm going to make a, a normal map, and I know that I can by going down here. There's something called normal map. I don't want to use this because if I advance things like the UDIM workflow, that's not going to work. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to bring in, if this isn't here, I'm going to go to my Z plugin. I'm going to drag this over here, and then I'm going to open up something called multi-map exporter. Okay, if I open that up, um, I'm going to say, well, what do I want? Okay, in this case, I want a normal map. And then I can say down here, export options. I can open this up, and then I can select things here. I'm going to just go ahead and leave it like this. Um, now, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it like this, and, and we'll see what happens. Okay, then I, if I go to my file names, this is going to be, be important if you have UDIMs. You have to switch this to UDIM, okay? And that's going to give it the proper naming convention. That's going to make kind of everything work. I'll click OK. The other thing that I want to be mindful of is the map size, okay? You can see they give you pre-selected things right here, but I'm going to move this slider. I'm going to have it 8192, the largest map size that it, this can produce. I don't believe you can type a higher number, so that's kind of cool. Um, I can also see that it's flips all maps vertically. Okay, and this is on by default. If it's not on, make sure that that's on. And that's important because by default, ZBrush will have the map upside down relative to how it wants to be in Maya. So it's cool that it can just flip it vertically right there. And now let's say I'm ready. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create all, um, let me see. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create all maps. And this pops up, it's saying, hey, where do I wanna save it? I'm gonna save it in ZBrush Normals. And I'm gonna call this Normals. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. And let's just see what happens. So it automatically put it to its lowest subdivision level and it's kind of calculating its, its thing. And I can see up here, it's telling us what it's doing. If I wanted to change my mind, I could hit escape to cancel the process. And if you have only one map in the zero to one space, this process should be faster. But this isn't gonna take too long. And I could pause the video, but I, I do kinda want you to just see how long it took. Okay, so this took about a minute to, um, to work. And now let's go back in and take a look at that. So if I look at the maps, so if I go to desktop, here it is, ZBrush Normals. This is what they look like. Okay, kind of this purple and blue map. That, that looks about right. Um, 
let's go see how we did. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to go new scenes. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to build this from scratch and I'm going to go back into ZBrush and what I want to do is I want to make sure that this low resolution model is the one that I'm putting these maps on. So I'm going to go ahead and put my geometry, make sure it's at level one, and then I'm going to export and I'm going to put this into the folder. So ZBrush normals, I'm going to call this OBJ underscore low because it's a low poly one and hit save. Now I'm going to go back into Maya and I'm going to import that. So file import, then, oh, uh, let's see. Okay, OBJ low. And one thing that I want to be mindful of is down here, I want to make sure that single object is on. I want to make sure files of type is set to OBJ. If it's set to multiple objects, it's not going to look like it's multiple objects, but sometimes it's kind of like cut up really weird. So I'm going to make sure that it's single object and click import. Okay. Now you could be sitting here forever thinking, ah, when's it going to import? But if I press F, you can see that it was actually sitting above the grid. Okay, so just be mindful of that. One way to know for sure is to open up the outliner and see if you see anything in there. Okay, great. So here's my character. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to smooth out this kind of this faceting. So I'm going to select this, go mesh display, soften edge. There we go. Now I feel like that's kind of easier for it to receive the normals correctly. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to right click assign a new material and because I'm using Arnold as a rendering engine I want to make sure that I give it an AI standard surface so I'm gonna to go to Arnold shader AI standard surface and then in here okay now this is the T-Rex material I'm gonna go all the way down to geometry here it is geometry and then I'm gonna to go to bump mapping and then there I'm gonna go ahead and add a file I want this to be tangent space normals. And then I'm going to put it on the yellow one here on bump value. And then I'm going to go to the folder and now I'm going to go find my normal map. Okay. Now, yeah, granted, I do have five normal maps and I only have one option to pick, but I'm just going to pick the first one and click open. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to apply all over. So if I press six, you can see that it's not correct right now. Uh, so what I have to do is UV tiling mode. Say, hey, I'm, I am using UDIMS. And then I have to click on generate preview. And you can see that it's still not looking right. I have to make sure my color space is set to raw. And then maybe generate preview one more time. There we go. Okay, great. Now we've got that in there. That's from ZBrush and I think that everything is looking good. So now I'm gonna kind of switch gears and show how to do that same process, but I'm gonna do it in Substance Painter instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Substance Painter and I'm gonna to go to ZBrush and kind of prep myself here. So no longer do I need this thing. So if I wanna do this from Substance Painter, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to export out a low resolution and a high resolution. So I can see that on geometry, I'm on level one. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit export and I'm gonna go to substance normals. So you can see I created a, a folder and I'm gonna call this OBJ underscore low. Okay, great. Then I'm gonna go to the high. Okay, and this, this process may take a little bit longer. And if I hover over this, I can see that this guy, or if I look up here, I can see that this is like 12 million polys. Okay. Which is a lot. And so if I go down one subdivision level, you don't have to do this. I can see that hardly any visual data has changed. Okay. So there's not much difference between 12 million polys and 3 million polys. So in this case, I think I might export out this one because I feel like it'll process faster. So um, once again, if you're confused by that, just go ahead and um, export out your highest subdivision level. But I'm just going to export out this one. So I'm going to hit export. 
and I'm going to go to desktop. Now this is substance normals. I'm going to just call this obj underscore high because this I'm, I'm considering this my highest one. Save. Okay, great. Now in Substance Painter, let's take a look at this. I'm going to go File, New, PBR Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend. I'm going to go ahead and select the file. Okay, so what am I going to uh, select? I'm going to select OBJ Low. Notice the high is not in there yet. I think it's still actually saving. Um, and I'll click Open. I'm going to set Document Resolution 4096. This is important. Um, because I'm using UDIMS on this, I want use UV Tile Workflow checked, and then this one checked as well. So I'm going to leave it like this and click OK. OK, great. Now my model came in here, and I can see that it, uh, it respects the tiles, and I can see that it has it tagged with the appropriate number in the corner. That's important. OK, good. Um, so now what? How do I get the normals on here if I want a Substance Painter to do the baking? Well, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go to my Texture Set Settings, and I'm going to go to Bake Mesh Maps. When I go to Bake Mesh Maps, I'm going to say Output Size. Heck, I'm going to put it to the highest. You don't have to put it to the highest, but I feel like obviously you're going to get the most detail there. Um, and for the normal map, I'm going to say, yes, I do have a high poly mesh. Okay, so what I'm going to say is um, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go find my high. I can see that the it actually finished saving, so OBJ high. You can see it's 349 megabits. That's a pretty big file. Okay, I'm going to click open. And now it should produce the normal map. And actually, a lot of these other maps, including curvature and ambient occlusion, things like that, based off of this high resolution data that we're putting in here. So I'm going to go hit bake selected textures. And now I'm going to let it think. And what it's doing is it's producing a normal map. And what I'll do then is I'll take the normal map that it produces here, and I'll bring that into Maya. And then we can um, kind of compare and see what it looks like compared to ZBrush. So which one is easier? I don't know. I feel like. Um, they both seem pretty easy to do. I feel like this one, maybe it seems a little bit more straightforward. Um, and then if you did produce it from ZBrush, you could use the maps that you produce from ZBrush and bring it into Substance. And I'll show that next. Okay, so let's just kind of hang tight here. Um, I can see that it's producing the maps. It looks like it's on actually the last one here. We know that ZBrush took about a minute to produce the maps. Uh, so it looks like this one may be taking a little bit longer to pr produce the maps. Maybe I'll go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so that took about five minutes, so significantly longer than ZBrush. But I suppose we're not really comparing apples to apples because I did produce all the maps. So if we look down here, you can see it produced all of these. Uh, so not just the normal map, but all these other ones. Um, and I suppose if I wanted to, what I could have done is I could have unchecked everything and that might have sped up the process. But I feel like for what it's worth, um, this, if I was starting it in Substance Painter, this is exactly what I would want. Because all of these other ones, the curvature map, if I go down here, the curvature map, I can see it's based off of the normal map. The ambient occlusion is based off the normal map. All of it needs the normal map. There I can see the normal map. Okay. But I'm going to go, I'm just going to export out the normal map right now. So if I go to File, and I'm going to say Export Textures. And now I want to make sure that I'm going into my folder here of Substance Normals. Select Folder. And then if I come here, I'm going to say, um, here's the normal. And I, that's the only one I want to export. And I can see that it's .udim. OK, that's really important. If it's not set to that, 
um, what I could do is I can come up here to the Arnold AI standard um, and now make sure that it has the .udim because it, it's going to need that. And you can see here's my UV tiles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and export that. Oh, it looks like it did the metalness map too. I accidentally had that selected apparently. Okay, now if I go into Maya, and if I go into Maya here, I'm actually going to launch maybe even another Maya. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And then I'm going to have them right next to one another. And then we'll see if one normal map looks better than the other. Because remember, this normal map was produced from ZBrush. Now I'm going to bring in the Substance Painter one. And they're both at the same resolution of 8K. So we'll take a look at that. And I'm going to apply it exactly the same way. So just waiting for Maya to launch. Here we go. Here's Maya. And let's say, you know, I want to be 100% certain that I'm grabbing the right T-Rex. So this is kind of a cool trick. I can export the T-Rex directly out of Substance Painter. I'm just going to say Export Mesh. And I do not want to have it triangulated. I'm going to say Export. And um, Substance Normals. Okay, so I guess I already did have the low and high because I brought it in here. So I can just use that. But if I didn't have this or if I lost it, here's how I could export it out again. So I'm going to go back to Maya. And I'll go File, Import. And if I go to Substance Normals, here I want to bring in the low. Again, I want to make sure that that's set to Single Object. If you don't see it, make sure your file as a type is set to OBJ. Import. Press F, there it is. And to get it to be clean, I want to select this guy. Surface, a mesh display, soften edge. There we go. Uh, and now I'm gonna, you guessed it, I'm gonna apply the AI standard surface. And then if I come over here, I'm gonna scroll down to geometry and under bump mapping, that's where I'm going to apply the file. Tangent space normal. I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to go find it. And I'm going to make sure that it's in my substance normals. There it is. And obviously I don't want the metalness. I want the normal. There it is. Click open. Just like before, UV tiling, UDIM. And set this to raw. And click generate preview. Might take a little bit of time. Make sure you have six pressed in the viewport. And there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and kind of split my screen here. Okay, so if I look at this, um, split my screen this way. And I'll split my screen this way. Okay, whoa. Okay, if we look at this, I feel like they should be really identical. Okay, so this one, once again, is from ZBrush. This one is from Substance Painter. And so I think that um, we could say that the ZBrush one, I think, was faster to create. The Substance Painter one... Uh, it took longer, but I guess I was producing all the other maps, and it was be kind of ready to be painted. Um, so which one's more efficient? I feel like um, I would probably still go with a Substance Painter way just because now I'm ready to be using Substance Painter. It kind of saves me a step. But I think there's nothing wrong with the ZBrush way. Okay. Now let me show you one last thing. Let's say if you did it the ZBrush way, and you didn't want to bake in Substance Painter for whatever reason, um, how could you use your ZBrush maps in Substance Painter? Well, let's take a look at that. So if I go to Substance Painter now, I'm just going to go File, New, 4096. And now I'm going to select, I'm going to go back to the ZBrush one. I'm going to say OBJ Low. 4096, UDIM, OK. 
All right, so I'm kind of back here. Here's my file. Here's my tiles. And remember, I want I exported it out from ZBrush, the normal map. Let's say that. So what I could do is I could come down here on the assets and hit this plus sign to import resource. And I'm going to say add resources. And you can see here, these are my ZBrush normals. I'm going to grab all of these. And if it doesn't work, um, it may be because of the normal or the naming convention, but we'll, we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And I'm just going to type in custom. I, I like to type in custom for all my stuff. So I'm just going to copy and paste. This is a kind of a keyword, so you can find it easy. And I'm just going to say it's a texture. Okay. And I'm going to say to this project and import. Okay, great. Here it is. So now what I can do is if I go to my bake, my texture set settings, I can take this, and this five means that there's five UDIMs, and I can drag this onto my normal map, okay, right there. And now when I go to bake mesh maps, I'm going to uncheck normal. That's important. Okay, I'll put size. Um, I'm going to put 8092, 8192. So I'm going to uncheck normal, and I'm going to leave all these other ones checked because it's going to create these based off of the baking instructions that I gave it of this normal. Remember, this normal was created in ZBrush, um, and I'm not using my high-definition meshes here. Okay, that's kind of the difference. So if I hit Bake Selected Textures, now it's going to go through that same process, but you can see that it kind of is bringing a map that we had from ZBrush, and it's going to be using that instead of kind of doing the, the baking automatically for us. So this is kind of a, a hybrid option if you ever wanted to produce your normals from ZBrush but then kind of use them in Substance Painter, you have that option as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video and then I'll check back in once it's done. All right, so it looks like that was about two minutes, so kind of right in between our other ones. Um, and I can see that it produced, once again, all the maps. And all of these maps, ooh, it actually looks like the curvature, looks like there's a problem with that. Um, looks like that's okay. Uh, and looks like the normal is actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, I would have to relook at that curvature map, but I feel like, um, if in doubt, I feel like it looks like the other two methods are maybe the safest. So once again, you can, um, just to kind of recap, if we look at this, in ZBrush, I use the multi-map exporter to create the maps directly out of ZBrush, and then I could import them into Substance like I just showed. Or I could export basically a low resolution out of ZBrush, a high resolution model out of ZBrush, and then import that into Substance where I'm bringing the high res here, and then it automatically kind of generates that for us. And as we can see, the results that we get are actually pretty good, meaning that um, they're, it looks like they're pretty much identical. Um, but I think that if you have to choose, I think I would probably go with a Substance Painter. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, once again, if you have any questions, leave it below. Make sure to like and subscribe for videos like this every week, and I hope you found this helpful.